Welcome or welcome back to Wide Gaming. Today we have some more on Nightingale. Nightingale launches tomorrow at the time of recording this video, and as some of you may already know, I've been playtesting the game for the better part of a year and a half. And recently I've been able to stick some hours in ahead of the game's launch, so we're going to go over some tips that will help you get through that starting phase a hell of a lot quicker and give you a better start to the game. There are many things you can do, many obstacles you can overcome that will really enhance your gameplay towards the mid later game stages if you get it done early enough. It's going to drastically improve the time it takes you to get through those early stages and to get some of that better gear. Now if that sounds good to you, subscribe to the channel and stick around for much more Nightingale content. Now Nightingale is a survival crafting game with plenty of locations dotted all over the realms. One of the most important things in most survival games is simply exploration. You will need to explore and come across many things on your travels. There's various POIs located all throughout the realms that will full of realm cards, decent healing items, loads and loads of other stuff including essence which is something that you're really going to need. Now all of these areas are scattered, they're randomized and they're different POIs. Some will have you climbing through things, some will have you beating enemies and others will have you solving simple puzzles. Now if you can do all of these things you will come away from these POIs with a decent amount of rewards, especially in those first beginning realms before you get to your respite realm. Now as you're progressing through the realms you'll be picking up loads of awesome stuff but also loads of crap that you don't really need. Now in this game you can do one of two things with that crap. You can deconstruct it which will give you essence or you can drop it. Now always deconstruct items because essence is a big part of the game. You're going to need it from everything to building items later on in the game to buying things from traders. Essence is one of the most important factors of Nightingale, and you will need as much of it as you can possibly get. Now, deconstructing items is by far one of the easiest ways to gain essence. So if you're running through the woods, simply pick things up as you go. If you do get over encumbered and your weight is too much, simply deconstruct anything that you've got that you don't need or want. If you do this throughout the tutorial phases, you will have more than enough essence when you meet the first essence trader later on. Now on your travels you'll come across many animals, you want to farm these as much and often as you can whenever you see them because you're going to need a hell of a lot of leather to increase your gear score. So all the animals that you come across just take pop shots, try and grab as many as you possibly can because leather is a pain in the ass to get and crafting it takes a decent amount of hides. So the more animals that you kill early on the faster you'll be able to progress through that stage and then you're not going to have to worry and get to a point where you go, oh crap, I need loads of leather. Now I've got to go and farm hundreds of animals just to get some leather. Now traversing the realms can sometimes be a bit of a pain in the ass, especially if it's one of those mountainous, hilly ones like the forest regions have. In the desert ones, things can be a little bit easier, and the swampy ones are definitely some of the hardest because you can gain diseases through going through some of that dodgy water for too long. But if you find or craft an umbrella, those things will massively speed up your traversal aspect, especially if you are in a biome that is quite hilly. Because you'll be able to run straight to the top of a hill like that. And then when you get to the top of that hill, you can simply jump off and then use your umbrella. Bearing in mind, it does take up stamina to glide your way down. So if you run, sprint and jump off of the top of something, wait till you're a little bit further down before you open your umbrella and you'll come to a nice glide. Now, another way you can move faster is by using the dodge function. Now, if you do have a single handed item in your main slot, that will enable this function, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. Now, all you need to do is right mouse click it. Now, if you do this off the top of a mountain, you get a hell of a decent amount of speed on you and then open your umbrella. You will glide a lot quicker. This will enable you to move around the map pretty freely and pretty quickly. Now when it comes to finding your base area, I would highly recommend somewhere that has a decent amount of animals and somewhere that is relatively up high. Wherever you build your base, if it does seem to be a spawning area, then those animals will slowly start to fade away and move a little bit further away from your base. As far as I can tell, there aren't exactly set spawns, but enemies and animals seem to appear in the same sort of areas. But when it comes to a building aspect, I'd recommend somewhere near a mountainside because you'll come across lots of gems and lots of stones, especially if you want to do a stone building, and then loads of trees as well around a mountain. So it does work well if you set up sort of on the side or on the top of a mountain. You'll find a decent amount of resources everywhere and anywhere, and you'll have a decent view on where the animals are spawning in and be able to take them out from a bit of a distance. 
Now, once you've got through those first stages of the actual tutorial, you'll be able to pick your respite realm. Now, your respite realm is your home realm where you will build your estate. This is very important, and you're going to want to stay here for a little while if you're not looking at speeding through the game as fast as possible. If you can stay here for a little bit early game and build up yourself a little bit better, you will have a much better chance at survival when you go through some of those tougher realms later on. Another thing about the Respite Realm, it is the first place that you will come into contact with an Essence Trader and a Companion. These two things are very important, especially Companions, because Companions are really going to help you throughout your journey, especially if you're playing solo. Because Companions will aid you in everything from gathering resources to combat, all the way up to just being a pack mule if that's really what you want them for, because your inventory will fill up very fast at the start of the game. Especially if you haven't done a lot of exploring and haven't found certain items that will boost that carrying capacity, such as backpacks. Now, the way you get these companions is very simple. You must engage with them, have a little bit of a chat, and they will offer you a form of quest. That quest can be anything from help building the structure to defeating enemies. Now, once you've done that quest, all you need to do is simply engage with them again. And once you've done that, you will have yourself a companion. Don't worry if you're not a fan of this companion, you'll be able to find various companions later on throughout the questline. You can also change the weapons and gear on these companions to make them much more effective in combat situations if you see fit. Now in your respite realm, once again you will be coming across the Essence Trader. The Essence Trader is a very very important early game because this guy will sell you lots of materials, crafting benches and blueprints that you will need to progress through some of the quests later on. Now, you will be progressing through certain quests, building certain items, but you'll get to a point where it takes you to a separate realm. If you go to your Essence Trader at first and buy all of the benches that this guy has, this will enable you to skip a lot of those quests later down the line. Because a lot of those quests will have you building certain crafting benches, making certain items. But if you go to the Essence Trader first thing, and then grab everything that you can with the essence that you've gained through deconstructing items through the tutorial phase, you'll be able to buy every single bench, and then set them up as soon as you possibly can. Now once you've been to the Essence Trader and grabbed yourself a companion, you're going to want to find a decent place to call home. Somewhere to build your base. You don't have to go nuts on the base building aspects right away, but it will definitely help you if you can get a semi-decent structure set up and build all of the crafting benches from the blueprints that you've acquired so far. That way, later down the line, when it comes to a quest where you have to build a certain bench or craft a certain item, everything is already there and built for you, and you don't have to run backwards and forwards from the Essence Trader, because the Essence Trader will not restock the blueprints that you've bought. They may restock some items that you've bought and materials, but blueprints for benches, weapons, things like that, they won't restock. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is some basic and beginner tips to get you started nice and easily in Nightingale. There are many more things that can be gone over and we'll do that in another video going over some of the more harder aspects of the game and some of the things that take a little bit more time to pick up on. Today this is just a guide to help you get the best start in Nightingale. But now we're going to wrap that one up there. For now we're going to wrap that one up there. Hopefully you've all enjoyed. If you have, you know what to do. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for much more Nightingale content. If you are a fan of this video and you have some of your own tips and tricks, drop them down below in the comments, and we'll probably get a community sort of tips and tricks video going as well. Let me know what you think down below. For now, I've been wired. You've been awesome. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you very soon with some more Nightingale.